Hi, everybody. <laughs> I think we are live now. So look who I've got with me. Got Yay! Mark the Spirit Whispers. So. Oh, isn't that nice <laughs> guy inviting me on his show? I'm so happy and excited <laughs> to be here. I'm excited that you're here. So it's been a while. So the, I wanted you here. And I'm just uh, glad that we were able to do it. So. Yep. Yeah, I know. Because I don't, uh, Sunday's a good day for me to do uh do something else so i'm really happy right i have on my saint patty's day glasses today yes you're wearing something green so yep. that works and a little green yep. wristband wrist corsage but that's about <laughs> it my shirt's sort of green it is green. it is sort of green it's like bluish green it's like the sea <laughs> there you go under the sea all right so we're going to um do a little bit of a talk here with Mark and then get into some readings. So we will say hi to who's here, if that's all right. Um, the first, uh, right off the bat, Mark is awesome. Oh, <laughs> yes. That's sweet, sweetie. Thank very you. First, very first comment. Oh, and um, Jackie is here. Hi, Jackie. Jacaranda. Viviana. Hi, Viviana. And Viviani and Miss Moonlight. Hello. Oh, Miss Moonlight, you might be new to me, Miss Moonlight. Oh, really? I think yeah, maybe. she's awesome. She's one of my um, Hi, very yeah. loyal subscribers. I don't and know Courtney. If I know Courtney. Hi, Courtney. This is one of the fun things about coming on Sebastian's channel. I get to meet new people. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know MLR. That must be from your channel. That's from my channel. Yeah. Welcome. Some of we we share some, of course, uh, that right. go back and forth. It's Morella, I'm Morella, because I know some of my uh, regulars were saying, "Are you ever going to do Scott? Are you ever going to do Scott?" <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. Um, yeah. Anya Bob is here. Hello. I'm still scrolling, scrolling. Yep. Okay, that is it for right now. I'm sure there'll be more coming in. Thank you so much, you guys, for being here. And um, Annie Bob says, Mark is so cool looking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank there you. you go. Nice. And I've been eager to get you on the show just to ask about um, what you do with the animals. And um, let's do that first, if you don't mind. Okay. And... Yeah. Um, how that you were telling me a little bit about that, how that yeah. came about, but yeah, yeah maybe some people don't know. Abbreviated version. That's okay. You take your time. Just to begin with, you know, I feel like I've been clear audience since I was little, even though I didn't know what the heck that was. But when I was really little, like young, very little, like, you know, before school, um, I grew up in kind of a rough, childhood we won't go into all that but a lot of time um i was afraid i was going to be killed and stuff it was really kind of you know horrifying but mm -hmm. at an early age something would come and talk to me and make me feel better and tell me everything was gonna be okay and when i was little you know i was brought up in church even though i'm not religious uh and i thought is that god or is that an angel? That's what I thought. I didn't know. You know, I was just a cute, tiny. Uh, but it would talk to me regularly. And I just would listen on and it made me feel a lot better. Then I began to realize that nobody else ever acted like that happened. or they. So I just never talked about it or anything. Right. And then I grew up and didn't really do much about it. Things changed. Um, eventually, when I was like about 31... It became overwhelmingly important to me to make sure I was doing something good <laughs> for the earth and the animal kingdom and just the world. I didn't want to die and feel like I hadn't done any kind of goodness. I know it sounds stupid, but no, it was not really at all. important to me. And I just could, and I was, it wasn't that I was unhappy or anything. I had moved to California to pursue acting because I have a degree in drama and oral communication. And I was enjoying all that, but I just, it just, the spirit part was missing, you know, and 
So anyway, and it, but at that time, I'd also with the Claire audience, I'd had other experiences where I felt like I could hear animals or for example, for a long period of time, the one I call Jesus. Right. Uh, talked to me for a long time uh, about being gay, number one, because I had a lot of issues about that. I've had a lot of stuff. Uh, and he was great about going through that with me and helping me understand all that. Um, and he asked me to reread the New Testament with him. And so I would read a passage and then he would, this is what would happen whenever I'd read like a channeled material, this would just happen automatically. And I didn't really know what it was happening, but I would read a little bit and then my head would get really heavy. My eyes would close. It was like, I'd go into like a meditation. And this is even before I even knew what meditation was. It was just, this would happen. Right. And then I would hear a voice explaining what I read and it would always pretend to be the energy that wrote the book, you know, because um, I found out about channeling through Shirley MacLaine. And so I kind of sought out different books like that. So that kept happening. And that's what happened with Jesus when I read the New Testament. And so that was something that was going on. So I just prayed to God and asked if there's something I'm supposed to do with this. And, you know, I'd read a couple of books about channeling and it just felt like I needed to know or something. I was just, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I said, if that's something I'm supposed to do, I don't even know what it is, but please show me now if there's something I can do to make the world a better place, you know, and be spirit. And am I supposed to do channeling, whatever the heck that is? And then um, in the next two week period, by some coincidence, I met seven different channels in person. Wow. Just, you know, the universe going, well, how about these seven, Mark? Would this help you um, figure it out? And it did help me figure it out. And at that time, I met one who channeled Dwal Cool, who's one of the, the teachers I still work with. Um, and for a brief period, he was doing channel training through this channeler. It was very, I just happened to be. And so I went to a weekend long channel training. Um, and it was several people. But what I noticed was I had sort of a, a cheat because I could already hear that. And I didn't even, I didn't do anything about that. So when I was in the class, I would hear Dwal Cool in my head and then the channel would say it out loud. So I was already going, well, I'm already, anyway, he wanted me to channel for him and I did. And then soon after, and I did classes and private sessions and readings and all that with Dwal Cool, who's an ascended Tibetan master. And then he said, but there's another teacher that also wants to work with you about your connection with the earth and the animal kingdom. And then I got introduced to, introduced to Pan. Of course, this is all in my brain, guys. So, you know, weird. Um, and he came through and started working with me. And then he did things like what I would call like college classes in my brain <laughs> about things like animals, um, crystals, um, like potions, plants, um, all kinds of weather, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and so I would regularly do like go into meditation for like an hour or so. And we'd have these kinds of things go back and forth. And then he told me he wanted me to channel him. I'm going, I don't think anybody even knows who you are. I don't know. <laughs> Some people think you're the devil or something. I don't know. It seems weird. I'm afraid. <laughs> but he convinced me. Uh, and also Dwal Cool was all for it. He was also pushing, not just through me, but through other channels, uh, my mentor channel as well. And um, so I started doing it. And, um, and I said, well, I felt like I was supposed to work with animals. And Pan said, yep, uh, the animals would like for you to be a zookeeper. And I go, well, that's impossible. I'm you know, I'm in my thirties. I have a degree in drama. I don't, I can't just become a zookeeper out of the blue. I have no education. And you can't put on your, well, I talk to the animals. So I am an excellent candidate for zookeeper because they're going to kind of go, okay, it's in that case. <laughs> um, oh. 
because I was already doing that. But anyway, he said, well, it doesn't really matter, Mark, about your doubts and fears. They would always be, I would always be like doubter, Mr. Doubter, and they would like tease me out of it. But um, it doesn't really matter because the animals want you, that's what they want to happen, and that is what is going to happen. So would you be willing for that to happen? I said, well, yeah, of course, I'd love to do it. I just don't think it's possible. And then within uh, less than a year later, I was a zookeeper at the Los Angeles Zoo. By just going, wow. by just, you know, the old manifestation techniques, listening for guidance, following through, pulling back, letting, you know, all that. And um, it was a great opportunity because then I worked with every animal that you could probably ever imagine. Um, hands on. And then just as if by magic, all the animals just immediately took to me. Like I never had any kind of, I have to get the animal to like me where that's normally what happens to animal keepers. Uh, but because I was always had pan's energy, they just seemed to just take to me all the time. And so I did that for 30 years and um, retired and moved back to Kentucky. And so, wow. you know, when I was working with Pan's Energy, I always did the channeling, the classes, the the readings on the side because I worked full time at the zoo. So right. I've been doing that since the 80s. And that's kind of my wow. short story. Wow, that's awesome. You've got a lot of experience. So I'm honored to have you on here. Oh, yeah, I'm just a newbie, so just a newbie learning. Well, you know, we're supposed to. Uh, uh, pull others in. And I know, right. know this because, you know, back in the 80s, I was a little bit like, why me? You know, and I was a lot like, there's nobody else that I know doing this. You know, I feel really isolated to this. A lot like I felt as a gay kid on a farm in Kentucky mm. in the 1960s. It's like, I don't know another soul on the planet who is there wasn't even the word gay at that time. Who is right. this? What? So it was kind of a little bit of that again, like, oh no. <laughs> now I'm in this whole woo woo spirituality thing. So anyway, you know, it, it was it was difficult, but I was a big newbie. But I also learned that th that time I was supposed to be going first. I've always had to go first a lot in things. And that's just part of my I have a 22 life path, which is called foundation builder. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of times in my life, no matter what I'm doing, I have to go and kind of cut the weeds down and get it started. And then I'm off to the next thing. And then, you know, I don't really get to enjoy it as much as build it, move on kind of thing. If that makes sense. Awesome. Um, Jackie wants to know what's your favorite animal you work with within the zoo? Well, that's, I, don't really have a favorite. I always say, and it's true as it can be, is it was always the one I was in front of at the time. And uh, oh. because I loved them all. And they all, and I always saw them instantly as a personality. So when I took care of 16 chimpanzees, it was like 16 individuals. They each right. did chimpanzee their own way. I had to build my own relationship with all 16 of them one at a time. That's the way you have to do it with all the animals. But because, but the animals just trusted me off right off the bat. Well, of course, I don't really have any, I don't mean them any harm or anything. And I do have a lot of that fool kind of um, goofy, playful sort of energy that I think they like. Um, because the universe kept, the whole time I was working there, you know, I had to hand raise lots of animals. So I did lots of baby care, which is right up my alley. And uh, then I also did a lot of um, helping animals transition, which I wasn't really that excited about. It's not my favorite because right. I'm really an emotional person. Just, you know, something happy makes me cry. So um, that was right. emotionally taxing. But I began to find out that it's something I was supposed to do because, you know, you know how coincidence works. It's really spirit working in your life. So, you know, it'd be too many times it just so happened that the day this animal is going to pass away, I'm taking care of it. Right. 
or the day she's giving birth is my day, you know, uh, or I'm all of a sudden assigned to these animals when there's a bunch of babies coming, uh, you know, so it, it just kept happening like that. So it was great. So I don't really have a favorite of all the animals in the world. I love dogs mm -hmm. and cats. I have both, of course, uh, but dogs, I love cats. So don't get me wrong. But they are so persnickety and have their own <laughs> sense of when and what and how they're going to do things, which I can yeah. and love. But dogs are just there for you all the time. You know, they are just loyal, true blue, and they want to be there with you. Whereas a cat go, I'll sit over here. Thank you very much. You know, get that cat that's going, please, no kisses. But, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they are very independent. Yes, for sure. I forced mine to get kisses anyway, though. Wanted to ask you um something. This was I thought this was really cool. I got a new deck today from one of my subscribers, Courtney, who's here, and it's the um oh my god the Cosmic Cat Wisdom Cards. Oh, yes. Do I you have those? those? Yep, love them. I just did a walkthrough about two hours ago, um, oh, so did? that yeah, so that I could read them um, with these. I you. saw that come up because I'm subscribed to you, of course, and it said you were going through a new animal deck. And I thought, hmm, I wonder right. if it's a pattern. But I didn't have time. To, I had to go do all that stuff today, so I didn't get to watch it. But uh, they have two backs. You've got oh, the one. Look at that. You've got the back that Debbie has. Um, but this right. one's my back. But it's the same one, Cosmic Cat. And they're great cards. I love them. I use them all the time on Animal Day. But there's also a divine dog deck. Oh wow! Which the same people make, and it's great. Like, uh, did you like the pictures and stuff when you were going through it? Yes, I loved it. It was fun. Yeah, they're really good to use. You know, it was so funny. Debbie and I have been doing because I met Debbie early on when I went onto YouTube, and we just clicked. And um, and I don't know, I pan asked me to ask her to do the animal readings with me. And I'm glad I did. So it's worked out really well. So we've been doing those together for a few years. And um, all of a sudden, one week, I was online and I found the Cosmic Cat deck. And I went, ooh, that sounds cool. Right. And I ordered it and got it. And I loved it. And that exact same week, <laughs> Debbie found the Divine Dog deck and ordered it. And if you were to pick, you know, she has cats. And my dogs are, so you, you might have thought that I would have found the dog deck and she would have found the cat deck. It was so weird. Right. We found the opposite deck on the same, basically the same day. And then we brought them to the show the same time. Then I, sure, I go, hey, that, I'm like, those cards remind me of these cards. <laughs> anyway. And so then after we got off the show, we both had to go and find the other deck. You know, it's so funny. But I felt like it, it was meant to be that we started using these decks. So I'm so glad somebody sent you one. And look at this, Courtney, who um, sent me the one that I was just telling you about, that we were talking about, is yeah. going to send me the divine dog. She's just a sweetheart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Courtney. They're really, I have used mine to pieces. I love them. They're really good to read with the dog, uh, dogs and cats. And I was telling you earlier, a lot on my channel, we do a lot about reincarnation, which was surprising to me, but they're great decks for that too. So anyway, love them. All right. Awesome. Well, would you like to get into some readings? Yeah, I'd love to. I didn't ask you about a um, a time limit. Do you have a specific time well, I can't go past, or a sweet spot? Well, I can't go past 630. Okay. All right. No problem at all. About a 90 minute chunk. I know we chatted a little bit today, but no problem. Yeah, Next that's we won't have to chat. That sounds great. All right. So please put your uh, question in caps and emojis just so I can see if you will, please. And I want to tell the people who've already put in their questions. I've got a couple questions here. Um, Debbie, Ness, Peg, and Anya Bob, I've got two different questions for you. Um Let's see. I'll, I'll take the second one down here. It looks like you redid it. All right. So um, we've had a couple of donations. Miss Moonlight um, gave some 
memberships. So I wanted to do you first. Um, so Miss Moonlight, if you have a question, if you could put that in. And if not, we'll go to Ness. Uh, one second, let me star these. I got Jessica Lynn, Seascape, Viviani. I got you. Viviani's wonderful, isn't she? I know you were talking yes. about her. She is. She was on my show about um, a week ago. We I had a great her. time. Yeah, she's lovely. Love her. She's Courtney, I got you. Border for me for a long time. Yes, yes, she's great. Okay. MLR, I got you. I see scape. Here we go. This okay. moonlight wants to know any messages from spirits, animal, or human. Any message? Do you have anybody specific in mind? You don't have to, but for me, the more specific the question, the more specific the answer. Let's see. Sounds good. So, from animals or just a message from animal or human. Well, I think I'm going to go with animal. Let's see here. And feel free to go first whenever you're ready. As I'm usually a little slow, so, but well, I'll try to pep it up. Oh, no, you don't have to. I can go first, too. This whoever's ready. Sounds yeah, good. yeah, if you're faster. Because the way I work is first I listen and then I do cards. So I try to hear first if spirit wants to say something about it or pan. And then I draw cards to see if they go along with what I'm hearing. Okay. So it can take me a minute. No okay, problem. so black cat Pico, she's saying. It's funny because I I said I think we're gonna go animals and I picked up the cat deck, so <laughs> Perfect. Well, Pico. And I was telling Mark, if you guys uh, would bear with me, this is the first time I've had a full um, animal show. I think I've answered one animal question and, um, all of the tarot that I've done, which isn't a whole lot, but so bear with me, <laughs> but I will uh, try to start here with Miss Moonlight and we'll see what happens, but um, just keep in mind, Mark's the expert, so, <laughs> but um, Miss Moonlight, I got the nine of earth and I got you a cat here, a ragdoll cat, and Nine of Pentacles is, of course, the spa day card and just having a having some things you know that you can do for you pampering yourself and so i'm thinking that you know how cats do and they pamper themselves all day long pretty much so i'm thinking that that's the first thing that he's coming into com coming into communication with you on and then we got the seven of cups and just making a decision and not having your head in the clouds, but just making a decision on your own and going with your gut instinct. And I got another cat from the animal deck, which is the ego. Um, this is the same as the devil card, but it's a lot different with the Siamese cat. It says you may feel that you're trapped in your situation, but that's not true. So be careful. Um, be careful not to overly focus upon material wealth and break free of negative thinking. Okay, so it might just be something that's holding you back a little bit. Um, then you got the two of swords again, making a decision. So this is coming up again, and um, this can also be meditation and um, just learning to trust that gut instinct. So I think that's something that I don't know if it was the he or she, but what Pico was trying to tell you, and also you need to go inward a little bit and go inside and find the light and make sure you're on the right path. I think you are, and um, you're a wonderful person, beautiful on the inside and outside. 
And that's just what I'm getting as a message. Um, I will do a cosmic cat. I can yep. get my hands on it here. Cosmic kitty. Assertive. Take uh, your place at the table. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that make sure you are keeping yourself first and going inward to look for that, for that self-confidence that I know you have. So just a reminder, I think, to be assertive. And I'll give you one more since you donated. Um, I got secrets. Let the cat out of the bag. I like those two cards. Yeah. So maybe um something that you need to say that has been holding you back a little bit. So that's what I got. Yeah. And Mark, do you mind if I am picking you? Or? If, if you do what? Oh no, it's okay. Uh, make yeah. you big here. Ah! Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, Miss Moonlight, do you have a cat now? That's the first thing I want to ask you. Or she has two. I was going to say or two right there in that moment. Mm -hmm. So you have two cats. Well, my little sweetie pie. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like our little Pico or Picasso is two cats, Murphy and Spencer. Is trying to tell me he's there now. How long ago did Picasso go? You said 18. Did you say he was 18 years old when he passed? And I believe so. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, so I'm already in that frame of mind from the first second when I hear it. And then Scott pulled two cards and both of those right before you got Murphy. Hmm. Yeah. And those two cards are really strong reincarnation cards for me that you drew, Scott. Uh, but so... Prosperity, that's like the one, first card you got, the nine of uh, pentacles, right, that you had. So this is a prosperity card, have it all. He had the life of Riley. Um, and it was just a wonderful life kind of a thing. He couldn't have been happier, I think. But my first thought in my mind before I started pulling cards was, ask who she has now. <laughs> and usually if they go that they're trying to tell me that he's there he's not in heaven he's there wow. so friendship care is there he's like he's still in your presence you can hug him and kiss him up um everyone is connected i get this card a lot when they want to continue their connection through more than one a lifetime together. He also feels like he might be teaching that other cat you have. Because, you know, when I was going to say, are there two cats? And then I pulled this card when I was thinking that, and I made me think, oh, I think there's two cats. Because um, he's talking about he's with another cat. Um, and a lot of times I get reward, pay it forward, when they're talking about moving into a next, the next experience, like they're taking their life they had and they're moving forward again. So, and the animals will do this quite often with their same people. They don't live as long as us. And so, you know, I've been doing this now for several decades and I just see more and more and more of that happening. Uh, it's happened to me and I see it more and more happening. So, I wasn't really expecting any of that, but that's what I'm hearing. So if I were you, I would kind of sit with that for a minute and see what you think. He's saying, I don't know. I feel like there might be some little behavioral thing that might remind you of Picasso. It feels like it's the one you're calling Murphy. Anyway. Okay. That's, that's what I was getting for that one. Awesome. Okay. Yes, Ness, I got you. You are going next. 
So thank you so much, Mark. You know, and I always, I almost always pull that take your rightful place at the table kitty cat card when they're mm -hmm. already back home. When they're already back. Yeah, that it's, wow. it's a done deal. And then when you pulled that card, I'm like, okay, well, oh, oh. <laughs> the other one you did was another that always kind of goes that direction. Anyway, I don't know. I just heard in my mind. Yeah, this. Anyway, there we go. No problem. You that, probably weren't that awesome. expecting that, Miss Moonlight, but there you go. All right, let's go to Ness. I would love a general message from my guides. All righty. And then, Courtney, you go after Ness. I'll probably draw the strength card for you, Ness. I think I pulled that for her. I'm just kidding. Oh, Murphy's an interesting cat. Never had a cat like him before. Hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling kind of strong in that direction. It's a pretty quick turnaround, but I know that's possible. Okay. All right, Ness, I got the Ace of Cups for you. So an overflow of love, I think, is going to be coming to you. And, you know, maybe in the form of a friendship, um, could be something else, maybe a relationship. But you definitely have um, love that's coming for you. And you can show that to other people to have it come back to you even quicker through karma. Um, then you got the Three of Swords. So in this one is the Rose-Breasted Grosbeak, I think is how you say it. Um, but it says sadness is a part of life, but you don't have to endure it alone. You may need a little time to heal, but once you work your way through the emotions, you'll be stronger than before. Okay, so the Three of Swords is kind of a dreary card, but um, there's positive in every card, and this is just to say that you don't have to be that way. You can you can um, lift yourself up through positive vibration and make that go into something better. Um, then you got the death card. And this is transformation, transition, change. So I think something new is going to be coming in for you. And then you got the emperor. But the deer mouse and this is just to say to take charge of that new change when it comes in and um this is like a leadership position i definitely see you as a leader ness you're you're um you're in a class by yourself with the leadership and i think that's awesome so just keep doing what you're doing there and then you've got the queen of earth which is the queen of pentacles self-nurture taking care of yourself, right? And then you're able to take care of others after you take care of yourself. But um, just love yourself and um, yeah, take charge. And I think that's, that is what I got. Let me get you a Cosmic Cat card too. Aloof, seek non-attachment. All right. So it's kind of funny with the dog there with this <laughs> tongue open. <laughs> the cat's rolling his eyes too. <laughs> those pictures are always so good on those cards. <laughs> that is, yeah. So seek non-attachment. I think this goes with the leadership um, card as well. You are your own leader and you you can manifest what you want to bring it in this. So that's what I got for you. Hi, Gerald. Hey, Gerald. I love when they say, hi, Mark and Scott, because my brother's name was Scott. And Oh, uh, really? Yeah, he, he passed away this past year, but uh, he was two years younger than me, so we grew up Mark and Scott, Mark and Scott, Mark and Scott, you know, all the time. It was like one more. Cool. Um, so, Ness, I get that, I don't know, there's stuff going on at work. You're still working, right? Are you working out in the work, work, worker world? 
Um, but I feel like there's work energy going on because I also got that emperor card and, and Scott get that too. Um, no, you're not working. Well, are you managing something? Because it feels like you're in charge of stuff. I'm getting this. Oh, you're in between jobs. So you're not done with work, you don't think, but you're in the middle. Because I'm getting all this work energy coming up. Oh, great. I have an interview this week. Okay, that there, there we go. That helps. So you guys know why I like you present when I'm doing your readings, because I always have to ask questions. Because I think work is approaching, my darling, dearest. Um, and it looks like you get the three of pentacles. So, you know, that's a lot of times. That would be like an interview, actually. Um, see, it looks like they're, they're asking you questions. This actually looks like an interview card today. Even though three of pentacles in general is like uh, working with other people who know other things, you know, joining... Um, Meaning of the minds, joining together. So when you said I have an interview, this looks like that. But I feel like, you know, we're kind of itching to get back to work. Eight of Pentacles. And because I get the Emperor too, the Emperor in this case kind of stands for the, the job, you know. Um, I think it's coming through for you. It's what I'm going to feel, what I feel like. And the reason I say that is because you've been working on your spirituality. I know this about Jeunesse. And um, so you also get the Ace of Wands, which is a gift from spirit as well. So it's satisfying spiritually as well as, you know, earth, earthly pinnacles. So you got all those pinnacles because it's an earthly manifestation, but it's also connected to your spiritual work. Look at that. Since January. Terrific. Love it. I'm such a good psychic reader. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really what this card was saying to me um that it's connected you know this new job that's coming in is because you've been working with spirit and co-creating and things like that and just in general this is kind of for everybody this five of swords energy that snuck in there that's the energy we're kind of in now on the planet in general that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with you personally. Uh, so it sometimes can create little hiccups and little um, moving forward, then have to take a half step back and then move forward again. So that's just a general energy that we're in currently. So I think they want to just remind us of that. And sometimes if there's a delay or a slight hiccup, it isn't anything you did. It's more about the times we're living in. So I think there's reminding us of that. Awesome. And you, in your job search. Yeah, okay. Didn't mean to cut you off there, Mark. Oh, no. I never shut up until somebody. <laughs> oh, that's Sonny there. Hi, Sonny. What you doing, buddy boy? He, look, he turned around and looked towards the... Um, computer when you said that that was you're the cool. same kind of kitty cat as my cat halo that i um inherited from my mama halo is a yellow and white cat like that yeah it's amazing a lot of um orange and yellow cats are all male or maybe not yeah. all of them but a lot of them are well the tiger ones i think are pretty much all male the pure tiger -y, tiger stripes i think right uh yeah you went over there to sit over because there's a lot of cards here and I was trying to find a spot and I had to go over there. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We've got Courtney next. Um, Courtney has a dog named Hunter is uh, Hunter. Courtney's question is Hunter happy as a solo dog. He is rescue and we have had him for a year and she loves this dog and this dog loves her. I'm sure. Yep. So she talks Hunter. about him all the time. What a cute name, Hunter. Yeah, any of you guys that never heard of me, come on over to my channel. And yes, this, please. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Subscription uh, subscribing. Yeah. If you are on my channel and you don't you're not subscribed to Mark, why not? So go over and pop over there real quick and please give him a subscribe. And Yep. I do animal yep. readings every single Monday at 2 o'clock Eastern. So come over there if you have questions about your animals. 
I always love to hear from you. And I do uh, anything you want to ask day on Saturdays at four. It's not me. It's my guides read those things. But we do it on Saturdays and Tuesdays. Everybody's always welcome. Hi, Jill. Um, this is not just pet questions only. It's uh, um, personal if you want as well. I wanted to say hi to Renee real quick. Hey, Renee, the tarot magician is here. I love that name. Right. Yeah. Tarot magician. I remember one time I was talking to Pan about the tarot cards and I said, I feel like, am I the magician in the deck? And he went, well, I call you the fool. <laughs> <laughs> went, oh, well, thanks a lot. He goes, I'm kind of more the magician. <laughs> You're kind of the fool. <laughs> the fool. Uh -oh. He goes, in a good way, because you tend to follow what I ask you to do. I'm going, oh, okay. You little brat. The fool's almost the, one of the smartest ones in the tarot, I think, because he's taking a leap and, yeah, and going trust. for it. And trust, yeah. Hard. And I do do that. Even though I'll complain and moan, I do jump anyway, you know, so there's that. He knows that about me too. But. And um, moderators, I did go ahead and close the questions just so we can be respectful of the time because there's a lot of questions that um, are still up there. So I appreciate you mods helping me with that. I feel like Hunter is happy number one he feels like you rescued him and you know and you did i think um and he couldn't be happier about that he feels like this is this is where he needs to be this is this is where he wants to stop you know stay uh but you're asking about he is open to having a buddy and you know it's kind of good because you've had him for a year, so he's established himself there, and he's established him his place. So he would most likely want to be the more of the alpha of the two, because uh, he'd want to like guide and lead one, uh, another one. But I think he's open to it. Um, I pulled these two cards, which you can interpret in different ways, but guidance, help is on the way. That's kind of like he wouldn't mind to have a companion energy. Uh, he doesn't mind being the solo dog, but he's okay to have a helper on the side. That balance that he, she goes also kind of talks to having to balance each other out. And, you know, dogs in general are pack animals, so they, they tend to like another um, animal. Whereas cats can kind of take it or leave it because they're more solitary uh, by nature. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a dog that's solitary and a cat that's not. But in general, it goes that other way. So he wouldn't mind to take one under his wing, I don't think. Uh, so I'm saying, yeah, he's open to it. What are you hearing or reading or saying about Hunter? Yeah, I'm getting... Um I'm getting the same thing. I think it's a definite yes that, um, well, that he is, I think he's happy as a solo dog, but I think that he would be just as happy with another one as well. Um, you've got the nine of swords. So if you do get another dog, it could cause a little bit of anxiety at first, but that's just normal. That's if, um, you know, you meet somebody new and then you have a new roommate or something like that, you're going to be nervous at first. So then you got the Ten of Swords or the Ten of Air. And look at your dog there. You the beautiful Siberian Husky. And this is the end of something and the beginning of something else. So um, I think it could be a new beginning for you to have the second dog. And then you got Six of Pentacles, being generous, maybe getting another rescue. And then the Lovers. Um, two is more than better than one, maybe in this case. And then the Ace of Pentacles. And that's um, like a new opportunity, money, but I'm seeing it more as a new opportunity for you and um, to rescue 
another dog and i think hunter would be happy to to have another dog there with him but that's what i'm getting let me pull you one more card here pull you one of the um I forgot what these are called the creative creatures or something like that the cosmic creatures yes i don't know you might have this too mark but got the moth oh and i've got everything written down here so i can just go quick to my um reference it says truth self work worth and authenticity all right and let me pull one more as like a clarifier to that is it, it said the got the camel as well and the camel is journey oasis reserve so being on a new journey with a new animal could be something that is going to be um, good for all that's involved, all of you. So that's what I got. Yeah. I like that card too you had with that dog holding the leash in his mouth. Like, um, right. Kind of wanting to be the leader of the two. And just one last thing I just put, I just ask about, you know, if we get another dog, is there any kind of thing you're thinking about? And I do think he'd be happier if it's a younger one. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I get this, which definitely looks younger. I don't think it has to be that young. And, of course, that's a kitten. But it says tender, general, loving care. Because Hunter will want to take more of a um, teacher, boss, uh, guider energy, I think. And you, you'll probably know because you know him better. But I feel like it'll work out better if it's a younger dog. It doesn't have to be an infant, but younger than Hunter. Hunter's three, yeah. I would say maybe under one, one or less. It's just what I'm feeling. Because he won't feel, that would be less threatening to him. Because uh, then it'll be like, oh, I'm going to help. I'm going to raise him to be a good addition. You, you don't really want somebody to, that's, you know, older than him that's going to want to try to dominate or anything. That makes perfect sense to me, too. Yeah, definitely. All right. Let me go through here. We got um, Debbie McDonald next. Love a reading. I am a Gemini. Okay. Is it just a general reading, Debbie? I if you're still Debbie. here, let me know. Debbie McDonald had a. <laughs> Debbie McDonald would love a reading. Okay, okay. Let me see here. The Gemini. I'm not sure Debbie is here. Might not be. We can put on that one on the side here. Okay. And go back to it if we need to. Um Peg Watts is here as well. Okay. Hi, Peg. One of my friends, Cindy, who was a champion of nature, artist, photographer, passed away in the beginning of February. Oh. Sorry to hear that. She's been sick for a long time. Can you check on her for me? All right. I'm going to let you do this one since you asked for you. Oh, well, that's just because she knows me. She comes to my oh. channel, but you can do that. Yeah. Hi, Peg, sweetie. I'm so sorry to hear about your friend passing. That's yeah, always hard. So, Cindy. Is Peggy oh. here? Or Good. Peg? Oh, yeah. Hi. Peg, are you here? Hi, Jean. Hey, Sunsaki Jean. Jean's coming on my channel tomorrow. I'm really excited. Yeah. Jean is wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing Peg either. Yeah, I know. Let's we'll see. On my channel, I always like say hello as soon as I call you. Yeah, as soon as I, I know I, you're here. And I'll, yeah, I'll come back too because it's just. I'd rather the person be here when I'm reading. Anya Bob, are you here? They were. Yeah, I saw them a minute ago. 
Jean, Jean, Jean. Hey, Jean, I was going to send you an email, but I'll just ask you right here. Um, I have your uh, your little Sun Psychic Jean symbol there, but I don't really have a picture of you. So if you'd rather have a picture on our, um, you know, our invite that I'm putting up right after this is over, would you send me one? Thank you very much. There's Peg. There's Peg, yes. All right. Well, she felt immediately better as far as, you know, because I don't physically, like you said, she'd been sick, but it was like getting to the point where she just was depleted. She felt depleted, like spiritually, emotionally, everything. But then she says she immediately felt better, you know, that. Um, it's, it's still kind of new, you know, it, it's like a new thing. She's, she acts like that's still, I'm taking it in. It's a lot to take in. I feel like she's saying, um, she says, some of it is like what I thought. Some of it's not, um, it's. This is always so interesting to me because, of course, you know, I don't know anything. So when Spirit starts translating those kind of messages, I'm always like, oh, that sounds so interesting. Um, she says she's talking a lot about light, that it's, there's a lot of light on that side. And she feels like I'm light. Uh, so I get this. King of Pentacles. It's interesting though, because in this bright white, it's like what I hear her saying with this card is that, you know, you go before the light, the creator, you know, like maybe the ultimate King of Pentacles source. Uh, but I like that she's all, you know, in those, the King of Pentacles, it looks kind of, you know, spiritual. It's like she's got on a Pope outfit or something. Uh, but anyway, I feel like she's trying to get across that she was present. She met, or that's not the right word. Remet, <laughs> returned to the source. But she's talking about it as if like it was a thing, you know, something there in front of her that. That it looked separate, even though there was a oneness. Anyway, that that was pretty exciting. Uh, this is interesting too. She said that that would be interesting to put into put onto paper or to express in art. Anything else you want to say to me? She's not quite sure what's next um you know I, I don't feel like she's decided what to do in the next what's next she's still kind of adjusting to this energy of you know having an energy body that doesn't have a physical uh, casing around it and kind of fitting in and figuring it all out. And it looks like she's looking at options because there's jobs to do up there. I don't know what, but I often they tell me they're doing stuff like working, sort of what we call working. Um, so I think it's a little soon for her to make, to know exactly, but she's feeling great. She likes it. It's like, um, First of all, all that pain, uh, Ill, all that just instantly disappeared. And you were asking about her dog. She left the dog. Is he okay without her? Hmm. Well, he's adjusting. It looks like, what, did a, 
a relative take him or something. Looks like he knows the person that took him. Uh, and he's adjusting to it. It's a little bit of a, he's still kind of adjusting, even though it's been a bit. Okay. What about you, Scott? All right, Peg. So first card I pulled was the King of Pentacles. And this is just telling me that um, Cindy just wants you to know that she wants you to be happy. She wants you to have happy family life, happy home, which makes me think of the King of Pen Pentacles, who's also worked hard for what he gets and has manifested as well. So she wants you to manifest your dreams and be happy. Um, I've also got the Nine of Water or Nine of Cups. You can see a dog right there. So I had just pulled it when you asked about the dog, if the dog was going to be okay. Um, this is the Nine of Cups, which is manifesting and the genie in the bottle card. So um, you even see the little genie lamp there. Manifesting, again, what you want, I think is a, is a big, big... Um, thing that's coming through lesson I think that's coming through that she wants you to manifest and then you got the queen of cups this is the empath queen so I really think that um is also says psychic you could be um have been given some gifts of psychic ability and empath ability as well which are really really awesome gifts to have so um, I think she may want you to delve into that. So that's what I got there. I'll get you Cosmic Hat card too. You got teacher, share your knowledge. Yeah, I think she wants you to know that you're really um, a strong person and you have the ability to teach others and they will listen. So that is what I got. Cool. Thank you, Peg, for being here. Go ahead, Mark. No, that's all. I, it was great. All right. Thank you, Peg. Next, we have Jessica Lynn. I'm sure I'm not doubling down on these. Okay, yeah, Jessica Lynn is next. Okay. We have a spirit guide message. Jessica, are you still here? I'm sure you probably are. Yes. All right. Yes, she is. Hey, Jessica. A spirit guide message. Well, the first part I got for you is the Empress. And this, again, is about self-nurturing, self-love, and creativity as well. And in this um, deck is the Angora Rabbit. I love this rabbit. It's actually a cute cutie for a rabbit. So <laughs> um, I would just say to... He's got the love of necklace around him. The Empress is about the about Venus in a way and the planet of love and just having love for yourself and for others. So that's the first one I got. Um, the next one here is the Queen of Cups, the empath card. So I think that um, by nurturing yourself, you're going to be able to separate your feelings from other people, which is really important when you're an empath. So just take that. Um, into consideration and then you got this i'll look at this the little kittens you got the seven of water or the seven of cups and this is decisions that need to be made and a lot of times it's better just to follow your gut and take the first decision that that comes out that's usually what spirit is giving you so it's about not having your head kind of up in the clouds instead being able to think precisely and through um, spirit and making that right decision. And for you, Jessica Lynn, I've got the bliss card. Contentment is in hand. 
love that cat. <laughs> I love that cat. That's like one of my favorite. That got little face. Yeah, that's that's so cute. So bliss, contentment is in hand. So good things are coming for you and to you. So um, yeah, that's what I got for you, Jessica. Hey Jessica, uh, just a quick question. You're not, are you looking to move or anything like that? Are you thinking about moving or ch changing something like a job or a house? Anyway, I just want to ask that question. So uh, beyond that question, um, the, the thing I'm getting is this, at this time in your life, oh, I'm thinking of moving. Oh, well, that makes, I'm so glad. <laughs> this is why I need you guys to be here. So you can yeah. confirm for me because, again, me, Mark, I know nothing. So I just have to trust what comes through and trust that I can hear correctly. Anyway, this is the prime time to manifest what you want, Missy Miss. So that's the first card I got was just this is a great time to manifest that new thing you're wanting. And about a new place to live because after I drew this car, all the other cards seem to be about moving. So <laughs> that's why I was wondering about that. But they want you to know, you know, make a clear choice. If you're really looking about, I want a new house or I'm changing new location. Be clear on what makes you happy about the move, what you really need to support you and lift you up. You know, uh, we're all allowed to have a place to live very much we all deserve it the universe is there to help provide it for you so get on track with that you know and choose be you know so if i'm working on manifestation with spirit i'll get pretty specific on what would what i want and what would satisfy me and, and even why i want it you know like why would that make me happy or why would that um help me to serve better or something like that you know i'll try to do that uh and then and I'll kind of present that with, I usually just go right to God when I'm doing my little initial part and then the guides help. But um, and once I have it down, then I kind of just toss that away because it's this or that, which is better. That's a good thing to remember. Even when you pick your perfect house, you go, so I want this or that, which is better. So which serves me and everyone else concerned to their highest good. That's kind of, you know, that's the way the best manifestation works where it just serves everybody. So they're talking about that. So I would say sit down and do that if you haven't already, because the rest of the cards are talking about that looks like moving uh, in store. It doesn't necessarily be moving because you're getting kicked out or anything because you're walking away from full cups, but it's more like a choice. I want to move in a different location, a different area. So I feel like that's on its way. Uh, they want you to kind of focus in on that. Uh, sort of put the, the work into it. But now work in this case is like just mentally aligning yourself with what you want. Uh, you know, and, you know, like tell yourself, I'm co-creating with spirit, a new place to live, you know, and keep in that little alignment there. I feel like if you're already looking or if you've already been looking, there's going to be some possibilities coming up here that you're looking like, oh, I might look into that a little bit more, something like that. I know, Miss Moonlight, this is a brand new deck I got. It's called the Pink Tarot. It's just the Rider weight in pink. Oh, wow. But I got it because it has words on it. I never really had one with words on it before because I mostly read most of the even though I know what the cards mean. I, don't know. I really read from pictures more often than not. Uh, but I like this one because it had words on it. So that's why I got this one. And it's cute, too, because I love pink. Oh, there you go. It's called the Pink Tarot. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Oh, great. All right. Next up is um, Seascape. Seascape, are you here? And Viviani, if you'll let me know, you are next after Seascape. OK, 
Okay, Seascape. I see Seascape. She's here. But I okay, thank you. Okay when I retire in June. I believe financially okay. Um, Pendulum says yes. I'm hearing that there'll be a little bit of adjustment, period. Um, sometimes like with retirement some expenses go down right away like for me i don't spend anywhere near as much money on gas as i used to when i was working full time uh and so some things go down you know and then you get some social security and all that and if you have retirement so i feel like it's kind of coming from different directions and there'll be a little of adjustment period but you'll be okay um you might adjust some things. So uh, I'd rather have this than that kind of a thing. Or it's the same result, but I can get this for less money. You know what I mean? So there's some things that you have to do a little differently. But I think it's going to be okay. That's what I hear. I didn't pull any cards, but I'll pull one more. Scott's talking. All righty. Seascape. Um I got a yes, um, just like Mark did, but I think that there's um, spirit is coming in with a, another message to, for you to be content um, when you do retire. So the first one is great. You got the Ten of Pentacles, so that's having everything you need, having worked for it, and now it's yours, happy home, and um, being good with the retirement. So the Ten of Pentacles is perfect for that. Then, as you, some people may have noticed, I'm picking from different decks. And I love it when I get double cards because it really just makes me think Spirit is really tr trying to drill this in. Right. Right. And so we got the Eight of Cups here in this deck. It's the Eight of Water. And this is walking away from something that no longer resonates. And don't look at it as a bad thing because if the thing is not resonating with you, then it's going to be easy to get rid of. But there's something that you need to get rid of before you retire, I think, in June that is um, holding you back a little bit. Because look right here, the Black Cat Tarot, boom. You got the eight of cups again same card so it's telling me you need to walk away in start your retirement happy joyful with success and leaving something behind and i think you know what it is it's usually like i said that gut feeling that first thing that comes and pops up into your mind hey okay. let me get you a cat card as well release let it go Okay, so again, something that needs to be let go of. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's probably the job. <laughs> yeah, 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 it could definitely be that. Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, you're you're absolutely right. Look how relaxed um, the kitten is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's done. That's how I would feel when I thought I was retired. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got the risk card. Take a chance. All right. So take a chance. There you go. But I think it's definitely a yes um, from what I've got. But I think Mark has more for you. Yeah, it always feels a little risky, you know, when you move into retirement because you don't know exactly what that's going to be. So I thought I think that card's perfect. But I just put a couple of cards on why be financially okay. First thing you get, three of cups. Oh, we're dancing and singing. We're so happy about the situation. And then just the ace of cups too. It's a gift. Retirement is a gift. It's good. You're going to like it. Go for it. The third one is it's also a new beginning. So you're going to be fitting in the world in a little bit of a different way. So this is the three of wands. Sometimes I'll call that waiting for your ship to come in. So in one way, your ship's already come in because you're at uh, retirement. But you're looking to see how you're going to adjust to that. So, you know, some of that might be downsizing a little bit with that. With those cups behind you, you know, there's just things I don't need to do anymore. Uh, and I can let that go. But 
The other thing about this card and what I'm hearing inside is you're also going to be doing stuff. It's like, you know, retirement doesn't mean you just stop working or anything. In some ways, I'm more busy now than when I was working, you know, 40 hours a week. Um, but so there, is, there are going to be other things to do. And I also feel like they bring in money. That, like just because you're retired doesn't mean that you're going to automatically stop creating uh, money. So that looks like something that's coming up in there too, you know. So it all seems positive to me. You're going to be so happy you retire. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. And let's go to Viviani. Thank you, Seascape, for being here. And let's go to Viviani. Message from Spirit about what's coming my way, please, and thank you. All right. Yeah, I want to bring in. I think you're going to, sweetie. You're going to have some kind of little job opportunity or something. It's like part-time that you like. It's like doing it because you want to, not because you have to, is what I'm going to say, too. Okay. I'll shut up. Viviani is here. Right away, um, Bibiani, I've got something in going for you in um, romance or a new partnership coming in um, for you because you got the two of cups, the lovebirds. So, yeah, you you got possibility of a really um, strong friendship or romance that may be going on. Um, I don't know your situation yet, and wouldn't say that unless you did, but if you're single or married at this time. But if you are looking for someone else, this might be a good time um, to open your eyes and just see what's out there. And because you got the Page of Cups as well. So this is the page that's usually bringing in the um, fish in a cup, which to me means abundance in the tarot so bringing you a, an abundance of love and um sensitivity as well this is the sensitive page so um be sensitive to your talks with other people your friends and just realize that they are there for you and you can talk to them as well as because i know you're a great listener right make sure you have people you can talk to as well and then I've got the Ace of Pentacles for you. So this is a new opportunity. This, again, something new is coming in. So um, I, I think that it's going to be good for you. This could be new money as well. And um, just the start of something really good, a brand new, um, a brand new opportunity. That's the word just keeps popping up. And there's a reward, it looks like, in that cup as well so rewards and recognition for you also um let's get you i like these cat cards and i know mark has them too i can't keep from picking them up i like them so much that's right you'll, you'll <laughs> love them. you got envy find your own uh, <laughs> interesting their face the dog's over here you gotta look at this the cat's face <laughs> he didn't get any cake. He didn't get any cake. <laughs> find your own. So this is for you to look and find what you're looking for and manifest it, I believe. And I think that is all I've got for you right now, Viviani. But um yeah, keep that in mind. Just maybe in the in your back pocket there. Those cards have such strong pictures, but also the words are very strong on them, too. I don't know. They just bring mm -hmm. up a lot right when you pull them. They're, they seem kind of simple, but they have a. there's a lot to them, I think. Anyway. Right. I've been pushing them for a while, and I don't even remember who made them, but I love them. Okay. So, Viviani, you got lots of good cards here for me. Yeah, I see that, my sweetie pie. So... Spirit's pretty excited about you and about where you are in your life. I think you are too, because you've really opened up to the idea 
of that I have, my own personal private connection to source uh, that can help me in my life practically uh, and in all ways. And you're really, I don't know, you've sparked into it. You're on the road. It's like peaceful warrior. There you go. And I love it. So you get the full card. You're on the journey, kid. Uh, this a lot of times you might see starting, but you've already started. You're in the pro. You're on the journey. What is the journey? Becoming, realizing that you're a magician. So you got zero and one in oh, a row. Wow. Of the first two cards I drew, uh, and you said, "Yeah, I'm looking to manifest." Yeah. Well, you got the manifestation um, magician. Um, it's it's time. We're on the road. You're already doing it. So that fool, you know, you're already in the process. It's just this new awareness in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit is really helping to put you right up there in a position of power. So queen of swords, but, you know, just fair, rightful thinking, uh, a position of power, but with the feminine uh, foundation. So, you know, fairness. Um, it's it's a power position, but one that serves others. So, and you're feeling more in your own power. They're telling me, and I think you are. Uh, you're real. So they're just bragging on you. Let's just say that. That's what we're getting here from the guides. They're saying the work you're doing, sweetie, is really helping you balance earth, heaven, and earth. Um, the unseen and the seen. See this little, it's like that's the God symbol that she's got two coins in. And look, they're almost even, side by side. So I like the God symbol, but then there's earthly pinnacles in it. So it's like balancing heaven and earth is what I'm saying. You know, guys, I read from the pictures a lot. So, um, and what spirits, you know, bugging me in my head about. So that, terrific. And... One last thing. I could have just drawn forever because then I looked at the next. They're all just super. It's just like a string of positive cards. So love it. So you get one more ace. Ace of wands. So that's guidance from spirit coming your way to take some action. So I feel like there's some actual, you know, action to take. Like an opportunity. Um an idea, an inspiration, but it's it's not just fleeting. It's actually the next step kind of a thing that you've been working on, you've been thinking about, you've been focusing on. It's on its way. Here it comes. You know, so good. Love it, Viviani. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Viviani, for being here. We always appreciate you. Yep. And next up is um, MLR. And question, can I get a message from my birth mom, Barbara? And I see you're here, MLR. So. Yeah. MLR usually stays the whole time. Let's see here. From birth mom. Words. To me, MLR, um, I, I feel like your mom is saying that you are worth a whole lot. Um, you got out of three cars, two of them are pinnacles, and they're very high, pos you know, positive pinnacle cards. Um, you've got the eight of pinnacles or eight of earth in this deck, same thing. Um, I feel like she's saying you have worked hard and like she's watching you and watching the story of your life unfold and she's just so proud and happy with the person that you have become 
Then you've got the hanged cat or the hanged man, which is the new perspective. So I think she just wants you to look at things in every form and maybe just not one way, but, you know, discover what it is in your heart, in your soul that is, you know, making you um, make decisions in a certain way. And then think about pausing before you make a decision and really thinking about it and then saying what it is that you want to say. So just a little bit of a pause there. Then you got another pinnacle card. You got the King of Pinnacles or the King of Earth. And I think she's just trying to tell you that um, you definitely, you know, she's just so proud of you and you definitely have a lot of good things that are coming to you um, still on this earth. So um, just to have abundance and to be happy is what I'm what I'm seeing. Um, let me get you another card here. You've got the fullness card. <laughs> Give thanks. Give thanks. So yeah, that'd be just she wants you to be you know full of gratitude for all the things that you have. And also I'm hearing MLR that she is so grateful for the time that she had with you. And yeah. Oh, I'm Irish, as was she, and we got the Irish cob horse. Perfect. Yeah, and today's St. Patrick's Day. And today's St. Patrick's Day, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Irish. wow. Today is the anniversary of my conception. Oh, okay, 60 years ago. Conceived now, how do you know you were conceived day? on that day? <laughs> were you a fly in the war? <laughs> <laughs> I know when it happened exactly to the minute. Mom told me. <laughs> I remember it well, dear. Oh, today's your adopted brother's birthday. What's all kinds of stuff happening today? Let's go for the green. Um, <laughs> I should have been using these cards more for the... For today and i didn't think about it my um under the rainbow cards but okay so this is what she's saying uh to me and what i can hear here oh saint patrick's day parade yay she's talking about that maybe your childhood wasn't the most rosy oh no i don't want to you know be throwing shade if you had a lovely rosy childhood but I feel like she said you had, you had some challenges growing up. And she's so proud that you were able to look at this card. It's the little koala on a branch and there's fire on it, licking his flames. You were able to rise above the flames and the hassles and the hardships uh and stayed on top of it all uh, even though it may not have been a wonderfully peaceful environment you were still able to rise to the top because number one you have a lot of love energy she says you know and you you're lovable she wants to say to you got this pink card but um lovable and she wants to say brave, so it's upside down coward, but you're brave. You take steps. You don't, you are, now she's kind of laughing, but um, hard-headed, but she means that in a good sense. So like um, strong-willed, maybe that's a different, a better way to say it than hard-headed. But like when you got your mindset, you did it and you didn't really let people knock you off. And she says that you've been working hard on putting some good karma into the world. She thinks, you know, there's that love, that pink card about the love energy you put out. Um, and like the road on and red chicken. And she says, you know, and it's coming back to you. So she sees good stuff here coming in the future. 
I think Scott was talking about that too. Uh, so I got the sun card and the sun is the sun, no matter where you, what deck. And she's saying that you're creating good for you. So like a good karmic return of some sort. That could be a windfall or just, I don't know what, but she's acting like there's some good news coming. And this just, I just pulled out of another card, the deck, Knight of Swords. So there's that good news coming. It's coming down the hill. It's coming pretty quick. So again, I get a good news. And then just to fool around, I went to my other deck and I got the Leprechaun, which is perfect for today. <laughs> Holding on to some money. So uh, it's a little fight because this is the four of coins. So sometimes that's being a little miserly or a little like I'm going to hang on to my pennies and they don't get so I don't lose them. Uh, it's just funny that we're talking about money and leprechauns and everything today. And when she was talking about some goodness coming in. So she might be talking about a little extra money coming in somehow. And just finally, she wanted to send you a big message of love. Uh, this is the two of cups. Uh, and also, like this card has a little pan in it. Oh. So uh, it's a pan and a mermaid, and they're uh, enjoying each other and um, interacting. So she's just sending you love, too. It's like from one world to another, you know, from heaven down to earth. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Mark, for that. And thank you, MLR. And if you, um, again, if you are on my channel and you are not subscribed to Mark, please do that. And um, if you're on Mark's channel and you're not subscribed to me, I would love to have you as a subscriber too. Yeah. Um, so I can't hit the button to hide this comment. My mouse just disappeared, but we'll uh -oh. pretend it's not there. <laughs> but thank you, everybody, for being here. And yep. we I really enjoyed it. reading with you today, Scott. It was great fun. I did too. Yes, yep. definitely. It was great. All right. I'm still trying to get, there's my mouse. All right. I was like, I'm not going to be able to end the stream. I'm just going to be stuck here. Okay. <laughs> I found the mouse here. All right. So um, again, thank you, Mark. And thank you everybody who's in the chat and hope you have a wonderful day. Bye guys. Love you.